This is your second set of notes on ecology. This one is going to focus on um, energy and matter uh, flowing through the ecosystem from one level to the next. Now a couple of things that we need to talk about. Um, the main term that you see right here is trophic. Trophic levels are the feeding levels. This is where we talk about food chains, food webs in the ecosystem. So the structure is based on the feeding relationships and when we talk about a food chain we're talking about the transfer or the sequence of food from the producer level to up from one level to the next in the food chain. The purpose of this or the, the importance of this is that it moves the chemical nutrients and the energy from the original producer level all the way up through the different feeding levels in the community. The terms here, these are the vocabulary terms, a producer of course, uh, producers are the autotrophs that support all the other levels. On a land-based or terrestrial ecosystem, you're talking about plants who get their energy from the sun. In an aquatic or marine ecosystem, you're talking about phytoplankton, algae, seaweed, and so forth that also get their energy from the sun. And, and in some ecosystems, it would also be the chemoautotrophs that get their energy from inorganic chemicals. The consumers are all heterotrophs. And uh, we have several different levels of consumers. The herbivores are, are the primary consumers. The ones that eat the producers are the primary consumers. So it would be like cows, um, the fish that eat phytoplankton, and so forth. Secondary consumers eat the herbivores. These are going to be carnivores, and they're going to eat the herbivores. So like we, and when we eat a hamburger, we would be a secondary consumer. Tertiary consumers eat the secondary consumers. Quaternary consumers eat tertiary consumers. Now, you're not limited to one particular level depending on, I mean, if you only eat one thing, then you might be stuck in one level, but most organisms eat more than one thing. And so you might be a secondary um, consumer if when you eat one particular thing, a tertiary at another one, a herbivore another time. Detritivores consume detritus. This is the dead stuff that's produced at all the trophic levels, things that die, the leftover parts that don't get eaten by that whatever level that happens to be. And so they, they're a very important part because, again, they return those nutrients back to the ecosystem. And then the decomposers are mainly the prokaryotes and fungi that break down those molecules into the organic materials that they uh, originally were composed of and convert them into inorganic forms. Again, to recycle the nutrients, the oxygen, carbon, nitrogen, um, phos phos phosphorus, and so forth, um, that uh, recycle it back through the ecosystem so it can be used again. This uh, shows a, a couple of different food chains. On the left, we have a terrestrial or land-based food chain, and on the right, an aquatic food chain to show you some examples of some of the things you might find at the different trophic levels. Of course, the plants or the phytoplankton are going to be the producers. The primary consumers are the things that eat those uh, producers. Secondary consumers eat the primary consumers. Here we have a mouse eating the grasshopper and the herring eating the zooplankton. We have tertiary consumers that eat the secondary consumers and quaternary consumers, fourth level consumers, eating the tertiary consumers. Now, if a hawk eats a mouse, rather than being a quaternary consumer, in that case, it would be a tertiary consumer, and so forth. If the killer whale eats herring rather than tuna, then it would be a tertiary consumer. A food web is the network of all the interconnecting food chains. The thing you need to realize, like I said earlier, is that the consumers can eat more than one type of producer. And they can also eat more than one type of uh, consumer. So you end up with a, a lot of interconnected food chains because most organisms don't eat just one thing. Here we have a food web that encompasses some of the same animals that we saw before. Okay, The producers, this is a desert, uh, land-based terrestrial um, ecosystem. So we have several different producers here, several different kinds of cacti and some trees and shrubs. And then we have several different primary consumers that eat various things here, uh, whether it's part of the, the cactus tuna or whether it's um, the seeds of the plant and so forth. Then we have various secondary and primary consumers. So this bird might eat off of the meat off off of the um, cactus, but it could also eat something else like um, the grasshopper. 
and then you have the tertiary and, and secondary consumers that may eat some of the primary consumers and some of the secondary some of the uh, secondary consumers and then finally the quaternary tertiary and secondary consumers again depending on what you're eating you can be at a different level when we like I said when we eat um, a salad we're going to be a primary consumer when we eat a hamburger we're going to be a secondary consumer when we eat a tuna fish then we might be a tertiary or quaternary consumer depending on what the tuna fish has eaten so lots of different levels there that are interconnected with each other in a food web um, now in the ecosystem this remember this includes all the organisms in the community plus the abiotic or non-living parts of the environment with which they interact the energy in that ecosystem flows through the components of the ecosystem through the organisms through the populations and the chemical cycling is the transfer of materials within the ecosystem so we're talking about energy and matter flowing through the um, ecosystem primary production is the amount of solar energy that is changed into chemical energy by the producers in an ecosystem for a particular area during a particular time period and the a total amount of the living organic material in that ecosystem is called the biomass Dis different ecosystems are different in their primary production and uh, how much they contribute to the total production of the biosphere depends on the what the components are of that particular ecosystem. The energy supply is what limits the food chain, okay? And the thing that you need to realize is that there's a lot of energy available at the producer level, but as you see, as it moves through the, as that energy in terms of calories moves through the food chain, each subsequent level of consumer is getting less and less of the energy. This is called a pyramid of production and it shows that flow of energy from the producer to the primary, secondary, and tertiary consumers to the higher levels. The big important rule is called the law of 10%, and that states that only about 10% of the energy stored at each trophic level is available to the next level. So if we have 10,000 calories of, and a kcal is a kilocalorie, that's a food calorie, rather than a heat calorie, um, 10,000 calories available at the producer level when the primary consumer eats that producer it's only getting about one tenth or 10 percent of the energy so only 10 percent of this energy is passed on to the primary consumer when this mouse eats this grasshopper that has eaten this flower only 100 kilocalories one one hundredth of the original 10,000 kilocalories at the producing level is passed on to the mouse. And then when the snake gets this particular mouse, only 10 calories or one one thousandth of the original energy is passed on to that level. When humans eat grains or things like that, fruit, vegetables, we're primary consumers. And when we eat meat, like hamburgers, we're secondary consumers. When we eat fish, we're usually tertiary, quaternary consumers. What you need to realize is, depending on what you choose to eat, you still need to realize that only 10% of that chemical energy available at that level is passed on to the next higher level. So if we eat more plants than meat of herbivores, we have 10 times more energy available than we do at the other, at the, um, at the, sec at the second primary cons secondary consumer level. Does that mean everybody should be vegetarians? Not necessarily. We are, we are omnivores. We eat multiple things, but we get more of the ultimate energy that's available when we eat the plant material as compared to the animal material. This concludes the set of notes about the flow of matter and energy.